this biblical word observation with and through brother Frank we greet all brothers and sisters all friends worldwide who are joining us now online very warmly we thank we are thankful for the wishes of blessing for this broadcast which have reached us from many brothers worldwide we are joined in the love of God with all of you. May the Lord bless us together through His Word. I would like to read a word from Second Peter, chapter 1. Verse 4 to 11. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 4 to 11. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly love, and to brotherly love, the general love. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Up to here, the word of God. We ask now, Brother Frank, dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, be blessed with the blessing of the Almighty God. What a precious word was read to us. In the Zurich preaching, we were referring to that the apostles have written letters and that letters were addressed or must be read personally 
that they were addressed to us personally. We will come to it just now. Also, I would like to extend all the greetings. Today, I will not mention names, but more than ever before, from all peoples and tongues, are greeting and they are rejoicing that we can have these broadcasts. God has really given grace so that His precious and holy word can be heard. We, of course, have arrived in May this year. Let us look back to May 1946, when in San Francisco, the UN made the declaration that Israel has a right to its own state. Let us look to the 7th of May, 1946, when the angel of the Lord came to Brother Brenham and when he gave him the exact instructions for his ministry. Let us look back to the 14th of May, 1948, when the state of Israel was declared. Brothers and sisters, it's just so mighty because we should pay attention to, namely when the fig tree becomes tender and in Hosea, Chapter 9, verse 10, we read that the Lord God found Israel like a fig tree in the desert. And after all these thousands of years, Israel is again in its homeland. And the Lord not only spoke of the end time in general in which we arrived, but also especially what concerns Israel. And for this, we are grateful. Of course, to us it is mainly about the promises which the Lord God has given to the church. Also to this, we will still refer. We emphasized that God does everything according to His Word and that He first gives promises and when the time has come then he fulfills what he promised but before we go into details i would like to extend two special greetings the first greetings from burundi from Bujumbura, just so powerful that the end time message brings forth fruit. A whole church received and accepted the word, the message, and all together 
625 brothers and sisters were baptized biblically in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We time and again may testify to this. God's word does also not return void in our time, but it accomplishes in them who believe it that for what it was sent for. And then a brother writes from Uganda to Brother Miro in Slovakia. He writes a special letter, an email, and he writes in it of Moses, of the man of God, up to Brother Brenham who was necessary to bring the message. And then, at the end, he writes about Brother Frank. And I ask Brother Borg to read it, not for my sakes, but for your sake, that you know that not only we in Europe, but the whole world from one end to the other has heard the divine message and who believes it with all the hearts. Please. Allow me to say that the believers of the end time message would not have had would not have had an anti message which is free from human interpretations if there would not have been the ministry of brother Frank by the grace of God God has set brother Frank to feed his children with a pure message, which is free from all human interpretations and which is within the limits of the Holy Scripture. To the Lord our God be the thanks for it. You all know before a divine commission can be carried out, the Lord must have given it first. He must have had commissioned. He must have said precisely what a servant has to do. He told Noah, what he should do, how he should do it, to Moses, to all the prophets, the Lord God gave instructions. And as this brother emphasizes, also to Paul and up to brother Brenham, if he would not have had a divine commission, then there would, there would not have been an 11th of June, 1933. Then the scripture would not be fulfilled today, namely, Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. We time and again dealt with these biblical subjects and write that what God promised for this time gives to the brothers 
who cannot believe it, it, it gives them so much trouble. And to us, who we, who we can believe it, we are strengthened. And we are just so grateful that we recognized the time and the hour. And brothers and sisters, how often we emphasized the scripture, namely that what our Lord said in Luke chapter 19, especially verse 42 and 44, when he looked over Jerusalem and he wept, oh, Jerusalem, that you at your time would have recognized what serves for your peace, but now it is hidden before your eyes. Just think of it, 4,000 years they waited and then not recognizing the day of the fulfillment of all of Bible prophecy of the Old Testament for the first coming of Christ, not seeing it in its fulfillment. God has sent a messenger just as he promised it. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight a path for our God. This took place. The ministry of John the Baptist was done. The scripture for Malachi 3 was also fulfilled. Behold, I send my messenger before me who shall prepare the way for me. It was fulfillment of scripture before their eyes. All of Jerusalem and Judea went to the river Jordan. They believed the message and they were baptized. But what was with the scribes, with the Pharisees, with the Sadducees? What was with the religious leaders? They believed everything what is written in Moses. But that, what God promised for that period of time, they did not believe. They could read everything from the prophets, from the Psalms. But for that, what happened at that time and what was fulfilled, for that they had no understanding. I'm not judging, but I say it in the name of the Lord. All brothers in all of the world, up to the charismatic movement, all can read and quote from all of the Bible. But when it's then about the direct promises for our time, then, as a German proverb says, then that was it. It's over. Then it's over. Then they are outraged because they don't believe that God has fulfilled these promises in a simple way in our time. And as then John the Baptist could, could testify, 
For to whom, to him it was said, on whom you see the Spirit descending, it is him, it is him who baptizes with the Holy Ghost and with fire. What happened in our time? God took care for it. That worldly photographers could make pictures when the supernatural cloud came down. And I think here, especially on January 1950 in Houston, Texas, when the pillar of fire appeared above the head of Brother Brenham. And if one couldn't have believed by then and didn't want to have believed, then the point of time would have been there where God himself takes care of that the supernatural confirmation could be recorded in the natural realm so that all, whether they believed or whether they didn't believe, could see and we may then, may then say then with certainty of faith, he above whom the supernatural light came down, it is him whom God has sent with a message that would forerun the second coming of Christ. That's how he was told. And that's how we many times repeated it. The man of God, all the biblical doctrines, as it is written, that he would restore all things, that all unbiblical teachings would be wiped off and that in the house of God, in the kingdom of God, in the church of Jesus Christ, is only valid what was laid into the church at the beginning. Every Bible doctrine was newly revealed be it about the Godhead, water baptism, Lord's Supper, election, the fall, in fact, all of the work of redemption of God, with all the promises, everything was crystal clear revealed. And for this, we are grateful with all our hearts that the Lord has laid it in such a way that I was ordained by Him to carry this revealed, holy, pure Word into all the world was His decision, not mine. But that, what happened on the 2nd of April, 1962, has not only Brother Brenham confirmed on the 3rd of December, 62, before witnesses, but God confirmed it worldwide. And we have shown it in the circular letter of December. In all the world, in all peoples and tongues, the word was preached. Not because it refers to me now, 
I care nothing for it that the Lord has called me with an audible voice commissioning me. But just look to the world map into all the world whether to the Ural whether to Siberia whether yes, wherever you look Please, look once again onto the world map, the precious word of God, which is called the end time message, should be brought to all nations. It was already announced of our Lord, namely Matthew. 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom of God shall be preached unto all nations. This is not a decision which Father Brennan made or I. It was God's decision from the very beginning and hear it very clearly, all of you. At that time, at the beginning, when the Lord gave the Great Commission 2,000 years ago in Matthew 28, He already has said in Matthew 24, what would happen 2,000 years later, namely in our time, that his original gospel would be preached unto all nations for a witness. Brothers and sisters, I, I say here a question consciously. When the Lord looks down on us, must he weep or is he rejoicing about it? Did we receive and accept? Have we, have we, have we become obedient in the faith or did we reject? And did we remain in unbelief and disobedience? Does it apply to us? Ye, my people, be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters. Have we all heard this divine invitation, this holy call? Ye, my people, my blood bought multitude, ye are my possession. Have you heard my call? Have you come to me? The Lord doesn't say, doesn't call to a man, but as we said already, and it must be repeated clearly, it is really written, the word which comes forth from my mouth will not return void unto me unless it has accomplished for what I have sent it for. It doesn't return to me, it doesn't return to Brother Brennan, but it returns to the Lord God, who has announced his plan of salvation through his prophets. And Paul could say, I have declared unto you the whole counsel of God. The same we may also say in our time. 
Now, if we look in our time, brothers and sisters, we on one side are said that we, we, we cannot come to the meetings like in all the past years to thank the Lord together, to hear His word together because it is still written, forsake not your assembling together, the more you see the day approaching. But in the same way, we may say, the true children of God, of course, they didn't all come to Krefeld, on every first weekend. Although sometimes in the past years more than thousand people were gathered. But at the same time in all peoples and tongues the true believers have come together. And if we now have no more the meetings in the usual way, then let me remind on our testimony here. A couple of days ago, I had a phone call of a precious sister, and she said, Dear Brother Frank, Yesterday, I turned 97 years, and I remember all the years back in which I came with Sister Freudhofer to Krefeld. But now, in my loneliness, I hear daily the sermons which are a great blessing to me. 97 years. And nevertheless, she can operate a device. And so, everywhere, several individuals are coming together. And it comes to fulfillment where two or three are gathered in my name. There I am in the midst of them. But we still assume that God will give grace, that we will have meetings, whether in Krefeld or whether in Zurich or wherever it might be. Now, a word, a word of admonition. Dear brothers and sisters, I'm not allowed to take part in any discussion about vaccination or about that what is happening right now. I just may not do it. It is left to everyone personally. I looked it up today. In May 1965, Brother Brenham said, I will make a journey to South Africa, but before that, I must be vaccinated. And Brother Frank, he can show his vaccination certificate. Since 1964, when I made my first missionary trip to India, I had to be vaccinated. And in all the years, the vaccinations were obligated and with a passport one should also show the vaccination certificate onto the table because without that one could not have entered the country. So everyone may decide for himself 
May God bless you all richly. Brother Brenham was obedient. I was also obedient. And all of you, you can also be obedient. Now, we go once again back to the word of Peter. Dear brothers and sisters, we truly, in the word of introduction, we heard about the virtues. And please, just simply take note of this remark and lay it aside and deepen yourself now in the word of God. We have heard what belongs to the new man, namely all the virtues which were listed. The Apostle Peter experienced it personally and he could then write whoever lacks these virtues is blind and cannot see afar off. And whoever has read before that and also takes other scriptures to it, God has given to us everything by grace so that we can have part in the divine nature. For only there where the divine nature can be manifested, there all the divine virtues of which we just read can be manifested. May God give us all the grace that we not only believe the promise for this time, that God wanted to send someone and he also sent him and that the divine message would forerun the second coming of Christ. It is, an, it is upon my heart that Matthew 25, verse 10, finds fulfillment with all who listen and believe now. Namely, those who were ready went in to the marriage supper. I want I want to have preached the word, having passed it on by a divine commission, what God determined for this period of time. And all who believe it with all their heart, they will make their personal experiences of salvation. And they will receive the new divine life with all the divine virtues will be manifested. And we have full part in the divine nature by the divine promises which become true in our personal faith life. To our God be the glory and the praise for it. To all the other things, what is happening right now on earth, we will not go into details. We just go now, simply, once again, to Second Peter, chapter 1, and we read from verse 17, please. 2 Peter chapter 1 from verse 17 to 21. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory.
This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. At this verse, we stop a bit. In whom I am well pleased. May God give grace that through the words which we will still read that he will speak to everyone personally. Go on. Verse 18. And this voice, which sounded from heaven, we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Something wonderful. Everywhere were witnesses who have seen, who have heard, and who have witnessed leaving us the testimony and we believe with all our hearts that it took place with our Redeemer that God's well-pleasing rested upon Him and I believe that God's well-pleasing now will rest on all sons and daughters of God who hear the word and who believe it and who follow the Lord obediently. Verse 19 We have also a more sure word of prophecy Whereunto ye do well, that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Also here we stop. What a meaning has the word of prophecy for us. All of the spiritual orientation is in the word of prophecy concerning, concerning the time lapse. Also, the spiritual orientation is in the ev evangelistic word, in the proclamation of the gospel, of the full gospel. Everything God has laid in a wonderful way, in an order. And Peter puts the main emphasis upon the word of prophecy in as much as it is revealed to us, then it shines like a bright light in a dark place. Go on. Verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in any time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Thanks be to our God that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. This is for me a holy word. All of the word of God is holy, but the special emphasis, whether a parable can be understood this way or can be understood that way, 
How many are interpreting parables as they like? About this, the Lord didn't say anything to us through Peter. He laid the emphasis upon the word of prophecy. That Bible prophecy is of no single private interpretation, not one. And I thank the Lord God until today. Not one interpretation I have given, not one. But with holy respect, I proclaimed the holy and pure word of prophecy, receiving it, accepting it. And the Lord revealed it to us by the Holy Spirit. Now, let us go to the prophet Isaiah, chapter 49. And here, reading verse 8. Please, Isaiah 49, verse 8. Thus saith the Lord, in an acceptable time I have heard thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee, and I will preserve thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth and to cause to inherit the desolate heritages. Especially, it's about, to me it's about, that the Lord watches over his word whether it concerns Israel as a nation, whether it concerns us as the church. Just so wonderful to know that everything happens as God has said it in His Word. And we read also from, from Hebrews, Chapter 11, from Hebrews, chapter 11, here we read verse 5, Hebrews 11, verse 5, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his rapture, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Thanks be to our God. Also here, we have a testimony Enoch, the seventh from Adam, he had God's well-pleasing. He walked with God. He was taken up without seeing death here, without being buried. As an example, that now at the end of the seventh church age, we all know in Revelation 2 and 3, it's written of the seven churches, of the messages which were addressed to the angel of that church. And then the last promise, he that overcometh as I have overcome, he will sit with me on my throne as I have overcome and sat down on the throne of my father. 
God's holy well-pleasing rested upon the Son of God, upon our Redeemer. And brothers and sisters, receive it by faith. Believe it. God does not see us anymore as sinners, no more as the ones who we were once upon a time. God sees us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in which the redemption, the reconciliation, the forgiveness took place, in whom the old man died and the new man came forth for only upon the new man can God's well-pleasing rest. Let us read it of the well-pleasing from Matthew 17, verse 5. Matthew 17, verse 5. Matthew 17, verse 5. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice sounded out of the cloud, and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. I don't know, but may God give grace for the self-examination, but please by faith, not in unbelief and not in doubting, but for our self-examination, we must read still. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5. And verse 11. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Verse 11. Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. For our warning, our admonition written for us, upon whom the ends of the world are come. And I am convinced that all who believe the divine message, that they know now that we really arrived at the end of the end time and for our self-examination, and I repeat, please, in sincerity, in honesty, but in faith. Therefore, it was written here, with many of them, God was not well pleased. We were reading of the well-pleasing. Enoch pleased God. God's well-pleasing rested upon the Son of God, upon our Redeemer. All these scriptures were given to us. Now, when it speaks here of the people of Israel, which have which heard the message of the hour, experiencing the calling out, the Exodus, were gathered as a 
congregation seeing the supernatural seeing the, the pillar of cloud witnessing everything personally and then nevertheless it is written with most of them God was not well pleased brothers and sisters I say this by faith and perhaps also because I have seen the innumerable multitude. I've seen it. I don't, I don't want to speak today about the supernatural, wonderful experiences, but the experiences which the Lord has given to me also in connection with the calling out and with the gathering of the saints to hear his word. Every time, whether on the 19th of September, 1976, brothers and sisters, I was sitting in that vision on top, on the balcony, in the first row I was sitting, and I looked to this huge tent. It was not round, but it was oval, and the chairs were all empty. In, in the next moment, a crowd of people, but so many, so powerful, all of a sudden, with a might, and all the chairs were taken, occupied, and it went out of the tent as far as one could look, and one could even not see it anymore so far. I believe that the admonition which Paul has written to the church in Corinth, he has written more epistles to that church. We take it to heart and we say, we say by faith, Dear Lord, I belong to them who believe with all their heart what you promised, what you have done in our time. I believe with all my heart and with all my soul. And then God's holy, well-pleasing, connected with His promise, which has worked the divine nature in us and all the virtues bringing forth that God's well-pleasing truly rests on us. Tell me, what can we still do? Our Lord has accomplished the whole redemption up to the completion already John, on the Isle of Patmos, he has seen the great multitude of the redeemed washed in the blood of the Lamb. Brothers and sisters, receive it by faith, believe it and accept it. As sure as you believe the end time message, and the ministry of Brother Brenham as promised by God and as being done by God's commission and after his passing that the divine message was carried by God's commission and by God's will that it was carried all over the earth as certain as you can believe this you are to be numbered to the elect who will reach the destination. Wise virgins who not only have oil in their lamps, but who have oil 
in their vessels. And I tell you, I believe that all who can believe in such a way, all who have accepted and believed, that they will be part of it. Because God's well-pleasing rests on us, we will be part when the Lord returns to take us home. May the faithful God bless all of you, really, richly bless you. And please, read the scriptures once again. Take them to heart. And please, trust the Lord in every situation. That's how it is written. Thank God in every situation. If it has to go through trials of the worst kind, thank God for it. As Job, you can cry out in every situation, in every trial, you can cry out, I know that my Redeemer liveth. And as certain as God's well-pleasing rested upon my Redeemer, so certain God's well-pleasing rests on all whom he loved, whom he pardoned, whom he reconciled, joining them with himself to our God. Be the glory in Jesus' holy name. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us stand up for prayer. Lord Almighty God, with all my heart I thank you. Give grace that all understand all things the right way. Dear Lord, you see, I'm old and weak. My memory is no more as it used to be, but your word, your promises are all as they are and were alive, powerful, and they become true. I claim all true, redeemed that they are fully delivered after spirit, soul, and body, consecrating their lives to the Lord, and that God's well-pleasing rests upon them. Brothers and sisters, receive it by faith, accept it. The Lord Everything what is worth what, what, what was worthy of condemnation, he has taken it from us and he laid God's well pleasing on us to him, our Redeemer. Be the glory, be the thanks, be the worship. May the blessing of the Almighty God rest on all ministering brethren worldwide, on all who gather here and there, also in small numbers. Dear Lord, complete your work and come soon. Yes, we believe that we will experience it once again. Ever faithful God, to you be the thanks for your precious and holy word, for the complete redemption that we may be part of it. You are well pleasing. May it rest upon your blood-bought, spirit-filled multitude. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Shira ga
Cristo.